So I want to talk to you today about how science saved my life. Uh, now, fortunately, many people can say that, uh, but they're usually talking about things like new treatments. That's not my story, though. Instead, I want to tell you about how doing science and being a graduate student helped me to survive. There's never a good time in life to get seriously and devastatingly ill, uh, but I'll always be grateful that I was at UC Berkeley uh, when it happened. Uh, being a researcher helped me to prepare for a brave and unexpected challenge, and I think you'll see that it's also done the same for you. Now, I got sick early on in graduate school. It didn't happen all at once, but uh, bit by bit, my life was completely dismantled. Uh, in short order, I was diagnosed with cardiac arrhythmias and autonomic dysfunction, uh, Crohn's disease, uh, a connective tissue disorder called Ehlers-Danlos, and a mast cell disease. So the mast cell disease was by far the most problematic. Uh, so mast cells are a natural part of the innate immune system, but when they proliferate or become dysregulated, they create an inflammatory and allergic disease uh, with serious multi-system comorbidity. So they are notoriously difficult to control. Routine encounters with everyday life uh, leads to things like anaphylaxis, or cardiac arrhythmias, GI bleeds, loss of consciousness, and even episodes of paralysis, just to name a few. Everything you eat, touch, or breathe, like a cap and gown, is a potential threat. Reactions can escalate from you know, minor to life-threatening in a matter of minutes. Uh, over the years, I spent many days and nights in the emergency room and the hospital. Uh, when my undergrads were away on spring break, I was here in Berkeley trying chemotherapy. Now, the mast cell disease had a way of robbing me not only of my future, but also my past. Uh, my existence was so utterly transformed that the life I led and the person I was uh, became as unfamiliar as a stranger. I disappeared beneath mounting restrictions and isolation and was forced to stop doing many of the things that made me who I am. Now, one of the only things I was able to hold on to from my previous life was science. Uh, Stephen Hawking said that however difficult life may seem, there's always something you can do and succeed at. And that became my new mantra. Uh, whatever roadblocks my disease put up, I would find a way to adapt and succeed. The lab itself quickly became a danger zone. Um, so with uncommon flexibility and guidance from my advisor, Michael Eisen, uh, I was able to leave the wet lab behind and become a computational biologist. And for that, I'll always be grateful. So long as I had a laptop and an internet connection, I could work on my thesis, even if I was in a hospital bed. Science became one of the only constants in my life. It gave me pleasure and it gave me purpose. Uh, it was a reason to keep fighting. Doing research and teaching here at Berkeley has been one of the greatest joys and privileges of my life. By the way, I would be remiss if I didn't mention that Michael Eisen is running for the U.S. Senate next year. <laughs> so, so now that you know what a great guy he is, you should totally consider voting for him. Uh, he's a big New England Patriots fan, but no one's perfect. <laughs> okay. So life, life was hard, but I had a lot of help along the way. Uh, when I got seriously ill, uh, my mother, a registered nurse, uh, retired early, uh, sold her home in New York, and, and moved to Berkeley. Uh, if it wasn't for her love, her expertise, her willingness to sacrifice, uh, I wouldn't be talking to you today. I also couldn't have done it without support from family, friends, doctors, pharmacists, and the department of MCD. Now, my circumstances may be unique, uh, but I don't think I'm alone in, in needing help to get through graduate school. I think it's safe to say that everyone on stage here today, uh, at some point in their life, you know, received help from somebody, be it you know, family, friends, peers, uh, and mentors. So it turns out that completing a PhD in the sciences is a lot like being seriously and chronically ill. Um, now, now, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that doing a PhD is pathological, uh, but the same skills that help you thrive in graduate school can also help you survive in real life. Uh, and this is especially true in today's world, where scientists face unique challenges. So completing a PhD takes hard work and determination over the course of, say, five or six years. If you're looking for a quick payoff, you might want to try an MBA. As much as you'd like to plan things out in detail, you know that things will inevitably change, often in unpredictable ways. So you have to be comfortable with uncertainty, and you have to be willing to adapt. But most important of all, you have to be prepared to fail, repeatedly. Our culture is so obsessed uh, with winning and success that we've bought into this myth that highly successful people never fail, and nothing can be further from the truth. Everyone fails at some point, that's a given. Uh, what matters is how you use it. 
The nice thing about science is that it teaches you early on that failure is an integral part of the process. Few experiments work the first time, or even the second or the third. What you thought would take you one month ends up taking you six. Uh, but failure is not permanent, and it teaches you things that success never could. This was not significantly different than my experience with chronic illness. Doctors still have a lot to learn when it comes to treating mast cell diseases. Um, so it often comes down to trial and painful error. I say painful because the error often involves things like anaphylaxis. The process can go on for months or even years before you find a medication regimen that affords you significant stability. My life was filled with uncertainty. New and unexpected problems popped up frequently. Treatment attempts often ended in failure. But my experience as a researcher taught me that progress could be made in such ways. And so I moved forward the only way I could, confident that things would eventually improve. Now, I'm not better yet, uh, but I've made significant progress, and, and I know that I'll continue to do so. I also know that I'm incredibly lucky to be here at Berkeley right now, because it's an exciting time to be a biologist. The invention of CRISPR-Cas9 genome editing in the Doudna and Charpentier labs helped to usher in a new golden age of molecular biology. Genomics is moving deeper into the clinic, and genome editing is poised to follow. The immune system is being harnessed to target cancer. We've discovered thousands of exoplanets, and soon we'll be able to study their atmospheres looking for signs of life. And yet, our challenges as scientists and citizens has never seemed greater. Our civilization is threatened by unchecked climate change. Large portions of the public deny climate science or the safety of vaccines and genetically modified organisms. The very notion of independently verifiable facts is being subverted. The president proposes draconian budget cuts uh, for publicly funded science. Congress would make health insurance inaccessible for millions. Rights that are enshrined in our constitution are under threat. So what are we supposed to do in the face of so many challenges? Start small. Start where you can. Start with what's right in front of you. You don't have to have a big impact, uh, or you don't have to fix everything at once to have a large impact. And that's a lesson I learned from my grandmother. My grandmother was an immigrant. Uh, she was born in Belgium and lived under Nazi occupation during World War II. Her father owned a lumber yard, and one of his employees, a deaf man named Jan, who took care of his elderly mother, received orders for deportation to a labor camp. Now, labor camps were not concentration camps, but the end result was unfortunately often the same. My grandmother took it upon herself to plead Jan's case to the German authorities. Surprisingly, they relented uh, and granted him an exception. But she took a risk by bringing herself to the attention of the Germans. Not long after this, my grandmother received her own deportation orders. She promptly burned them. She did the same thing with the second and the third sets. She couldn't stop them from dragging her out of her own home, but she wasn't going to show up for them. Fortunately, the war ended before that happened. Yan was deeply grateful for what my grandmother had done. When she became engaged to my grandfather, an American soldier stationed in Belgium during World War II, uh, Yan gave my mother, my grandmother, four tiny diamond chips. And those diamond chips were set in her engagement ring. When I first heard this story many years ago, it left a lasting impression. Uh, for starters, grandma was evidently a total badass back in the day. I thought she was all hugs and kisses and apple pie, but no, when, when it mattered the most, she had the courage to risk her own safety uh, to save someone else. Second, sometimes all it takes to save a life is just for one person to stand up, place themselves squarely in front of those who are vulnerable, and simply say, you can't have them. My grandmother couldn't do anything to affect the outcome of the larger war, but she could help the person in front of her, and that was enough. So however great our challenges may be, there is hope to be found in people who use their skills and abilities in service of others. One of the things that always impressed me about the faculty and grad students at Berkeley is that they were not only world-class researchers, but people who cared deeply about issues outside of the laboratory. The graduating class will leave Berkeley to pursue a wide range of careers inside and outside of academia. And that's a good thing, because the world needs you right now in many different places. You've solved hard problems. You've expanded the scope of human knowledge and understanding. You've educated and inspired undergrads. And you've proven that once you set a goal, you don't quit. No one is poised to effect greater change than you. Good luck.